Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Hi. How's it going? It's going great. How are you? Good. I had a, not a hectic, but a just steadily busy day at work. Okay. And then I came home and I made a salad for dinner and now I'm here. I went for a hike and Very I nice. worked and then I went for a walk mm. and I ate some salad. And Very nice. Now I'm here. Yes. Go team. Yay. <laughs> um, so yes, this evening we are discussing this New York Times article provided by you. Mm -hmm. um, I will share my screen. Uh, okay. Oops. You would think after doing this for how many times? <laughs> just how do you? Four years. Yeah, every okay. single week. I'm like, how do you do whatever? <laughs> every week. Okay. We learn how to do it. There mm -hmm. you go. Okay. How's that text look? Good. Oh, looks great. Okay. <laughs> ah, now I'm choking. Good lord. Don't die. <laughs> okay. So yes, the troubling trend in teenage sex. I have not really looked at this. Lisa has a bit. Um, a little bit. So yeah, we'll just discuss, read and discuss this. And then at the end, we've got some comments to go through and some people may join us. We'll see what happens. Yeah, and we like to live react to these kind of anyways. Mm -hmm. It's like we know we have a lot of background on all these topics, but then mm -hmm. like, yeah. yeah. And yeah, we would like people to join us in the, the voice chats uh, after the article. So yeah. if you're thinking about do, doing that, get your, get your mojo worked up. Yes. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so the troubling trend in teenage sex. Oh boy. By Peggy Ornstein. Ornstein. Yeah, she has some really good. Uh, she has a really good TED talk on YouTube. Ooh. Oh yeah, she's written a couple books about. Um, young people and sex and um the reality of it I, yeah i've learned a lot from her actually she has talked about you know how girls and women mm -hmm. uh deem a sexual encounter to be good if the man experiences pleasure and mm. boys and men also, you're right. Team a sexual encounter to be good if the man or boy experiences pleasure. Great. So, yeah, everyone's focused on male pleasure and like female pleasure is not part of the picture. And like there is sort of a fine line when she's like a researcher mm -hmm. um, who, you know, interviews adolescents and stuff. And it's like, well, we do need to know what adolescents are doing. You know, that's important. And I think Certainly. we need to be educating them at an appropriate age. Then it's sort of like, well, what's that age and what's appropriate to talk right. to them about? Because she thinks that, you know, female pleasure should be like much a much bigger part of the conversation because girls aren't even aware that female pleasure is like a normal part of sex. Oh, boy. Yeah. That's so, um, yes. Okay, let's go. Yeah, Joan says I'm about to have a violent reaction to this. Yeah, probably us too. Yeah. Okay. Debbie Herbenick is one of the foremost researchers on American sexual behavior, the director of the Center for Sexual Health Promotion at Indiana University, and the author of the pointedly titled book, Yes, Your Kid. She usually shares her data, no matter how explicit, without judgment. So I was surprised by how concerned she seemed when we checked in on Zoom recently. I haven't often felt so strongly about getting research out there, she told me, but this is life-saving. For the past four years, Dr. Herbenick has been tracking the rapidly rise of rough sex among college students, particularly sexual strangulation, 
or what is colloquial colloquial <laughs> colloquially thank you <laughs> referred to as choking it's monday it's my job <laughs> <laughs> nearly two-thirds of women in her most recent campus representative survey of five thousand students at an anonymized major midwestern university said a partner had choked them during sex one-third in their most recent encounter the rate of those women who said they were between the ages of 12 and 17 the first time that happened had shot up to 40 percent from one in four or 25 so can we just pause there for a second like two yes. thirds yeah two thirds that's crazy Whoa. that's crazy and and 40 percent between ages 12 and 17. That's so horrifying. That's wild. I mean, this is like you and I were talking privately about our own experiences, Mm -hmm. but I have never experienced this. Good. I I feel like, you know, I I think it's the article's going to get into it, but it's like, this is a surprise. You're being strangled. Mm. You know, in a lot of cases, not she asked for it or anything like that. So I feel fortunate. I've never had a surprise strangulation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Me neither. (laughs) Good. (laughs) But I think it's, you know, I was actually reflecting on that conversation you and I had, because I was saying Mm. like, Oh, well, you know, a lot of these things we talk about violence and blah, blah, blah. I mean, I have experienced male violence, but like, I, I don't, identify with a lot of the things like other women say but I think it's really important to like have empathy because I think you know the women who say not all men and not my Nigel and stuff like that they Mm -hmm. can lack empathy because they're like oh well I've never experienced it so like how big of a problem is it right then it sort of shuts down your like hearing about it you know so it's just important to have an open mind about this stuff even if you've never personally experienced it yourself Mm -hmm. because it definitely is like the majority of women's experience, right? If it's two thirds, that's uh, that's the majority. Existential Gamer says, I think it's very generational. And I agree. I don't think this was like, only in like for our generation, I'm saying like women, you know, late thirties, forties, whatever, older millennials, like we didn't grow up with like our boyfriends and stuff watching internet porn. Like that wasn't really mm. a thing so much. And then, on top of that, like internet porn has gotten more extreme over the years too. So like what a young boy is watching now is Ugh. just so different than the pornography that someone of our generation was exposed to. Yeah. So yeah, like I don't even think, I think this behavior existed, but it would have been really fringe, like BDSM, weather, whatever, like that kind of type stuff you know what i mean like mm-hmm. dominate tricks or whatever i don't know not into any of that but like mm. you know that that's where this would have lived it wouldn't have been mainstream it would have been like, oh certainly really fringe type of like extremely yeah bondage or whatever only in that context and i think they say it in the article but like obviously there's no safe way to do this practice and i think she even <laughs> says that like you know, BDSM people, like, not that I agree with that as, like, a community or whatever, but they don't even really do it because it's really dangerous. Extremely. You can easily kill a person. Extremely easily kill a person, yes. It's awful. Mm -hmm. Okay. As someone who's been writing for well over a decade about young people's attitudes and early experience with sex in all its forms, I'd also begun clocking this phenomenon. I was initially startled in early 2020 when, during a post-talk Q&A at an independent high school, a 16-year-old girl asked, how come boys all want to choke you? In a different class, a 15-year-old boy wanted to know, why do girls all want to be choked? They do? Not long after, a college sophomore and longtime interview subject contacted me after her roommate came home in tears because a hookup partner, without warning, had put both hands on her throat and squeezed. God, that's terrifying. Awful. Like, I I can't even imagine just, like, how frightening. Joan of Arc shared something 
personal I know I yeah like it just again it's like surprise you're being assaulted Mm -hmm. you know Um, I started to ask more, and the stories piled up. Another sophomore confided that she enjoyed being choked by her boyfriend, though it was important for a partner to be properly educated, pressing on the sides of the neck, for example, rather than the trachea. Oh, my God. No, there is no way, no safe way to strangle someone. Exactly. A male freshman said girls expected to be choked, and even though he didn't want to do it, refusing would make him seem like a simp. Oh my God. Yeah. So that you and I had this conversation too, that like how much of this behavior. So a lot of boys and young men and men are doing this, how much of it is for their own sexual gratification. So that's not going to be all of them, right? Like that's going to be some of them. Like some of them are turned on by assaulting Mm -hmm. a woman or girl. Um, But I think that, I, I don't know, you know, I, who knows what the percentage is. You'd have to research it, right? But, like, for some of them, at least, it's going to be b- because they believe the girl or woman wants it mm. because they saw it in pornography, and that's how it's portrayed in pornography. She wants it. She enjoys it. It gets, you know, it's sexually arousing to her. <sighs> so, like, even this guy saying, like, oh, I, I didn't want to do it. You know, yeah. I mean, I've just, you know, again, in my experience, I've found that this idea is really repulsive mm-hmm. to the partners I've had. Like, they don't want to harm someone. That's not like, you know, so. Yeah. That's the thing, too. You know, it's like, in which case, they're not communicating. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, there's no Mm -hmm. communication happening. She's not. And also, when once someone is strangling you, there's no opportunity to be like, hey, wait a second. I didn't want that. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, my God. Horrifying. While you're being strangled. Anyways. Um, A senior in high school was angry that her friends called her vanilla when she complained that her boyfriend had choked her. That's like a 17 or 18 year old. Like, oh, my God. Uh, yeah that's another thing i don't re- i feel like maybe we've talked about this at some point but like when did vanilla become like like this like bad like a slur yeah, yeah. oh you're vanilla like oh, i'm just normal and healthy hopefully like yeah. yeah like you need to get punched in the face to <laughs> have an orgasm you know what i mean like scary. for you to punch somebody in the face <laughs> like scary and if you don't like that oh you're vanilla Ugh. okay sexual strangulation nearly always of women in heterosexual pornography has long been a staple on free sites those default sources of sex ed for teens as with anything else repeat exposure can render the once appalling appealing It's not uncommon for behaviors to be normalized in porn, move within a few years to mainstream media, then, in what may become a feedback loop, be adopted in the bedroom or the dorm room. I just want to point out Joan's comment, too. If you can't have sex without BDSM, you don't like sex. Yeah. I think that's a really good point. That's a great comment. Choking, Dr. Herbenick said, seems to have made that first leap in a 2008 episode of Showtime's Californication, where it was still depicted as outre (laughs) when accelerated after the success of Fifty Shades of Grey. Gross. By 2019, when a high school girl was choked in the pilot of HBO's Euphoria, it was standard fare. A young woman was choked in the opener of The Idol, again on HBO and also like a Euphoria, created by Sam Levinson. What's with him? I love that. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Ali Wong plays... The Proclivity for Laughs in a Netflix special, and it's a punchline in Tina Fey's new Mean Girls. The chorus of Jack Harlow's Lovin' on Me, which topped Billboard's Hot 100 chart for six non-consecutive weeks this winter and has been viewed over 99 million times on YouTube, starts with, I'm vanilla, baby. I'll choke you, but I ain't no killer, baby. I discussed that in my Billboard video. Yes. Um, 
How to articles abound on the internet and social media algorithms feed young people, but typically not their unsuspecting parents, hundreds of hashtag choke me daddy memes, along with memes that mock even celebrate the potential for hurting or killing female partners. Good That's Lord. unreal. Can you just uh, read that sentence again? Like that is, we need to underline that how to articles. How to articles abound on the internet and social media algorithms feed young people hundreds of hashtag choke me daddy memes, along with memes that mock, even celebrate the potential for hurting or killing female partners. It's, it should shock everyone. Mm -hmm. This is truly shocking. Like, I think it's been a theme on the last however many streams, just the direction things are going, especially with people's mm -hmm. attitudes towards girls and women. I think mm -hmm. the attitude is from whence everything else springs, the legislation, you know. Of course. Yeah. Like, the normalization if, of it. Yes. If people are making jokes, what's a joke? A joke is something you find funny and entertaining about killing your female sex partner mm. that's like abhorrent absolutely yeah repugnant i mean sick it's sick it's a sign of a sickness of this mm -hmm. society that we're in i love this i'm not here to kink shame or anything shame. And anyway, many experienced BDSM practitioners discourage choking, believing it to be too dangerous. There are still relatively few studies on the subject, and most have been done by Dr. Hebernick and her colleagues. Reports among adolescents are now trickling out from the United Kingdom, Australia, Iceland, New Zealand, and Italy. 20 years ago, sexual asphyxiation appears to have been unusual among any demographic, let alone young people who are new to sex and iffy at communication. That's changed radically in a short time with health consequences that parents, educators, medical professionals, sexual consent advocates, and teens themselves urgently need to understand. Sexual trends can spread quickly on campus and to an extent in every direction. But at least among straight kids, I've sometimes noticed a pattern. Those that involve basic physical gratification, like receiving oral sex and hookups, tend to favor men. Mm -hmm. Those that might entail pain or submission, like choking, are generally more for women. I think that's so interesting. Mm. So sad and awful. Right? Like, and it, it reinforces that idea that in sex pleasure is for men pain is for women mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. the natural order, order of things so effed up <sighs> yeah so while undergrads of all genders and sexualities in dr hebernick's surveys report both choking and being choked straight and bisexual young women are far more likely to have been the subjects of the behavior the gap widens with greater occurrences. In a separate study, Dr. Herbenick and her colleagues found the behavior repeated across the United States, particularly for adults under 40 and not just among college students. Alcohol may well be involved, and while the act is often engaged in with a steady partner, a quarter of young women said partners they'd had sex with on the day they'd met also choked them. That's wild. <laughs> Either way, most say that their partners never or only sometimes asked before grabbing their necks. For many, there had been moments when they couldn't breathe or speak, compromising the ability to withdraw consent if they'd given it. No wonder that, in a separate study by Dr. Herbenick, choking was among the most frequently listed sex acts young women said had scared them, reporting that it sometimes made them worry whether they'd survive. I'm like speechless my yeah kind yeah. of i think like you know two things i have to say is like consent is has been such a huge conversation i would say over the last 10 years, 10 years. or maybe since like me too is about 2017 18 yeah um and at, at least since then but maybe even earlier like consent has been on people's tongues for a long time 
and you're talking about this is, you know, you, you cannot give consent while you're in the midst of this, but also, yeah, it's happening without any consent, just happening. It's like Mm -hmm. considered just like a part of it, you know? Yeah. I had something else I wanted to say, but I totally forgot. I wanted to say though, earlier she said something, I'm not here to kink shame anyone. And there was a comment in the comments of like, we need to bring back kink shaming, you know, like shame that kink. You know, uh, I'm not here to kink shame anybody. Well, maybe I am. <laughs> you heard we're talking about something where it's scaring people and uh, it's scaring girls, I should say. I need to stop saying people. Like, I feel like people obscures mm-hmm. the narrative so much. And I know I talked about that in my last stream of the language or whatever. Like, um, but. Yeah, you're talking about something that's frightening people. It's not consensual. Yeah. It is shameful. I agree with your chat comments. Yeah. Behaviors are shameful. And two thirds. Why should yeah. why should sex be something? I mean, oh yeah, the uh, second thing I was gonna say is, you know, another thing we've heard about the last like five, ten years is young people aren't having sex. Like, oh, young, mm-hmm. you know, like this. They're delaying yeah. it or they're just – they're not having sex the way they used to. It's like, well, who's even going to go near it? You know, you hear right? about your other young well, female friends. You, oh, yeah. Like, this, this is what is it what is. You, to expect. you want to do something that scares you? Well, I guess it's like people, you know, go on roller coasters and stuff or whatever. Like, <laughs> that's how you have to approach this. Instead of a thing that's just going to be – gentle and pleasurable or whatever like it has to be entangled like you're you're not going to a haunted house you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you have to be you know it made them worry whether they'd survive what that's it's like (sighs) jaw dropping honestly right it's not like like that's something you would think about like well, it shouldn't be something you think about in the bedroom. Good Lord. It's traumatizing. Yes. So, yeah, it's like it, even if a girl maybe experiences sex once or twice and this is what it is, then she's not going to want to do it again. And then it's going li- to lead to a lot less sex being had. And th- mm-hmm. that might not necessarily be a bad thing. But if if this is the route by which that's happening, it's definitely a bad thing because this is traumatizing girls. Yeah. Man, (laughs) among girls and women I've spoken with, many did not want or like to be sexually strangled, though in an otherwise desired encounter, they didn't name it as assault. Still, a sizable number were enthusiastic. They requested it. It is exciting to feel so vulnerable, a college junior explained. The power dynamic turns her on. Oxygen deprivation to the brain can trigger euphoria. Yeah, patriarchal brain worms right no there. No kidding, like, big time. They've seen porn too. I want to point out ultraviolet Morgan Tarot. Women have That's to like- be careful because our consent doesn't matter so much of the time anyways. I mean, uh, and if we don't give it and are ignored, what's going to happen? Nothing. We can never assume that our consent is going to matter or be t- taken seriously. And I think that's such a good point because in – and sex between a man, a girl and boy, a man, woman, whatever, uh, hetero, mm-hmm. um, the man is stronger. Extremely. That dynamic is always there when he can essentially do whatever he wants to, whether you say yes or not. Yeah, it's and- extremely easy for a man to overpower a woman. Just, just the any average man, not talking Absolutely. about like a bodybuilder or anything. Like just any average man is significantly stronger than any average woman right you're not going to be able to fight them off in that position they know it you know it and they also know that less than one in 200 rapes Mm -hmm. is uh leads to a conviction in which a man actually serves time so they rape with impunity Yep. They do these non-consensual acts with impunity. They they don't really need a woman's consent. What do they need it for? Right. If they don't have it, nothing's going to happen to oh them. They yeah. don't need consent. I mean, it's it, it 
you know, we could talk about like, what's the optimal, like, oh yes, everyone enthusiastically consents. It doesn't, we can talk about the reality is they don't actually mm -hmm. need consent. Yeah. There is no consequence for a man to assault a woman sexually or in any way. Right. But she lives with there's... the consequences. He doesn't, he just gets off and that's, and that's what's on his mind anyways. Not her pleasure. Not even whether she's scared out of her mind. Mm. Mm. That same young woman, incidentally, had never climaxed with a partner. While the prevalence of choking has skyrocketed, rates of orgasm among young women have not increased, nor has the orgasm gap disappeared among heterosexual couples. It indicates they're not doing other things to enhance female arousal or pleasure, Dr. Herbenick said. When, for instance, she asked one male student who said he choked his partner whether he'd ever tried using a vibrator instead, he recoiled, why would I do that, he asked. Perhaps, she responded, because it would be more likely to produce orgasm without risking, you know, death. <laughs> yeah, I really like how she writes, too. Yeah, no She's kidding. sarcastic. In my interviews, college students have seen male orgasm as a given. Women's is nice if it happens, but certainly not expected or necessarily prioritized by either partner. It makes sense, then, that fulfillment would be less the motivator for choking than appearing adventurous or kinky. Such performances don't always feel good. Personally, my hypothesis is that this is one of the reasons young people are delaying or having less sex, Dr. Herbenick said, because it's uncomfortable and weird and scary. At times, some of them literally think someone is assaulting them, but they don't know. Those are the only sexual experiences for some people. And it's not just once they've gotten naked. They'll say things like, I've only tried to make out with someone once because he started choking and hitting me. Jesus. Yeah, even like during kissing. Like, let's be clear. If you think someone is assaulting you, they are assaulting you. They're assaulting you. you. Good God. You don't have to wonder, is this person assaulting me right now? Mm -hmm. If you if that thought crosses your mind, you are being assaulted. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Keisuke Kawata, a neuroscientist at Indiana University's School of Public Health, was one of the first researchers to sound the alarm on how the cumulative, seemingly inconsequential, subconcessive hits football players sustain, as opposed to the occasional hard blow, were key to triggering CTE, the degenerative brain disease. He's a good judge of serious threats to the brain. In response to Dr. Herbenick's work, he's turning his attention to sexual strangulation. strangulation. I see a similarity to CTE, he told me, though the mechanism of injury is very different. In this case, it is oxygen blocking pressure to the throat, frequently in light, repeated bursts of a few seconds each. That's crazy to me. It's crazy scary. Yeah. And, and CTE is really similar to like dementia and stuff and how it destroys oh, yeah. the brain tissue and yeah. Yeah, similar oh. symptoms as dementia. So you're talking about, you know, yeah, something that can really do, if it doesn't kill you in the moment, could can do long-term damage. Yeah. Man. Strangulation, sexual or otherwise, often leaves few visible marks and can be easily overlooked as a cause of death. Those whose experiences are non-lethal rarely seek medical attention because any injuries seem minor. Young women Dr. Herbenick studied mostly reported lightheadedness, headaches, neck pain, temporary loss of coordination, and ear ringing. The symptoms resolve and all seems well. But as with those NFL players, the true effects are silent, potentially not showing up for days, weeks, even years. Yeah, those... I mean, to me, when I hear those symptoms, that sounds those are pretty, not minor. I agree. Like that sounds really concerning. Yeah. Lightheadedness, headaches, neck pain, loss of loss of coordination, ear ringing, loss like, of your motor skills. Like, that's really serious stuff. And again, we have to talk about like the gender dynamic of this. This is like only happening to girls. Mm -hmm. Two thirds of girls are experiencing this thing that can lead to brain damage. That's really and scary. boys aren't. You yeah. know, we always talk about that, like, what are girls being subjected to or expected to do that boys aren't? 
And this. this is actually violence that's become just completely normalized to where two thirds of girls are experiencing this without being asked. You know, a boy is just assuming, hey, I can cause brain damage in this girl with no consequences. Yep. It's, it's, it is like totally jaw dropping. Mm hmm. Really shocking. According to the American Academy of Neurology, restricting blood flow to the brain, even briefly, can cause permanent injury, including stroke and cognitive impairment. In MRIs conducted by Dr. Kawada and his colleagues, including Dr. Herbenick, who is co-author of his papers on strangulation, undergraduate women who have been repeatedly choked show a reduction in cortical folding in the brain compared with a never choked control group. <laughs> I, I'm just, I know I, I'm That's flabbergasted. Really I didn't read this part of this article. I'm like, yeah, I I'm, this is so serious. This is not just like a, like literal manifestational impacts on the actual brain. Like, yeah, your brain is going to be physically deformed to. I, I, I just don't even know what to say. Like, I'm rarely speechless, but this is wild. Will you please continue? Yeah, that is. Yeah. Um, Joan asked, what is cortical folding? Uh, let's Let Google. Look. I'm assuming that means how wrinkly your brain is. It says, yeah. yeah, cortical folding coincides with several important development processes. The folded shape of the human brain allows the cerebral cortex, the thin outer layer of the neurons and their associated, pro associated projections to attain a large surface area relative to brain volume. Yeah. So you're, you're going to have less surface area to your brain. Boy, oh boy. Um, and ultraviolet Morgan says this is especially bad because teen brains are still developing. Still developing. Right. Yeah, your brain is developing up till you're about 30. I mean, your brain is, de you know, brain is plastic. You, your brain is changing your entire life, but mm -hmm. still, they're, they're specifically like vulnerable, you know? Mm hmm. They also showed widespread cortical thickening, an inflammation response that is associated with elevated risk of later onset mental illness. In completing simple memory tasks, their brains had to work far harder than the control group, recruiting from more regions to achieve the same level of accuracy. This is so, so beyond upsetting. I'm also, having never experienced this myself, I, I'm kind of picturing it being like, oh, it just lasts for a second. But I'm I'm thinking now after reading <laughs> this that like, oh my God, what is, what is that? I, it's hard. For, I haven't seen this in porn. I don't watch porn. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just using my, it's like one of those things where I'm using my imagination, but probably what I'm imagining is very different from what it actually is. But like, is this lasting three seconds, 10 seconds, uh, you know, 20, like what? Well, I mean, I'm certainly... just imagining it like a one second or something, but I don't, I don't think, think so that's because what it is. I, I've definitely heard of like women, like fully losing consciousness. Whoa. Uh, well, how about, I don't know, it just popped in my head, but the guy who like choked the guy on the subway yeah remember that story yeah well, it's like I, I don't know it's like same kind of it takes a lot of time and force to make someone lose consciousness from like especially yeah. manual like with your hands right so it's like it's extremely violent my god i, I, I yeah I, i'm i'm blown away <sighs> The hemispheres in the choked group's brains, too, were badly skewed, with the right side hyperactive and the left underperforming. 
A similar imbalance is associated with mood disorders, and indeed in Dr. Herbenick's surveys, girls and women who had been choked were more likely than others, or choked men, to have experienced overwhelming anxiety as well as sadness and loneliness, with the effect more pronounced as the incidents rose. Women who had experienced more than five instances of choking were two and a half times as likely as those who had never been choked to say they had been so depressed within the previous 30 days they couldn't function. More, more than five? More than one seemed like more than I mean, one is too many, but like more than one even seems like how could how could you? Yeah, and I would say also about that, that depression and, and anxiety and sadness and loneliness, it's like, mm. how can you separate it out from, like, the effects on the brain? Like, there's obviously all cortical effects and stuff, but, like, also, yeah. it's a traumatizing. So trauma is going to have those same anxiety, sadness, loneliness, depression. That's all, Those things are all associated with trauma, too. So, like, you can't really, yeah, exactly, being in an abuse. <laughs> situation so you you can't kind of separate those out and say oh well you know it, like maybe football players who have repeated concussions mm -hmm. they experience more anxiety sadness loneliness depression or whatever from this brain trauma um but then on on top of it you have this you know emotional trauma too mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And i agree with joan saying this is a health emergency yeah, absolutely. This is happening to two thirds of girls, and it's having this extreme effect on their emotional health, physical health of the brain. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Whether girls and women with mental health challenges are more likely to seek out or be subjected to choking, choking causes mood disorders, or some combination of the two is still unclear. By hypoxia or oxygen deprivation, judging by what research has shown about other types of traumatic brain injury, could be a contributing factor. Given the soaring rates of depression and anxiety among young women, that warrants concern. Now consider that every year Dr. Herbenick has done her survey, the number of females reporting extreme effects from strangulation, neck swelling, loss of consciousness, losing control of urinary function, has crept up. Oh. Every year it gets higher. Among those who've been choked, the rate of becoming what students call cloudy, close to passing out but not crossing the line, is now one in five, a huge proportion, 20%. All of this indicates partners are pressing on necks longer and harder. Wow. One in five. Oh my god. 20%. The physical, cognitive, and psychological impacts of sexual choking are disturbing. So is the idea that at a time when women's social, economic, educational, and political power are in ascent, even if some of those rights may be in jeopardy, when hashtag MeToo has made progress against sexual harassment and assault, there has been the popularization of a sex act that can damage our brains, impair intellectual functioning, undermine mental health, even kill us. Non-fatal strangula strangulation one of the most significant indicators that a man will murder his female partner, strangulation is also one of the most common methods used for doing so, has somehow been eroticized and made consensual, at least consensual enough. Yet the outcomes are largely the same. Women's brains and bodies don't distinguish whether they are being harmed out of hate or out of love. Ugh. None of this is out of love, come on. None. Not, there is not. no love involved. People who love each other do not do this. No. I, I Again, men who love women do not do this. No. Oh my God. If there is such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I yeah. By now, I'm guessing that parents are curled under their chairs in a fetal position or perhaps thinking, no, not my kid. See title of Dr. Herbenick's book above, which, by the way, contains an entire chapter on how to talk to your teen about rough sex. I get it. It's scary stuff. Dr. Herbenick is worried. I am too. And we hardly, and we are hardly some anti-sex, wait-till-marriage crusaders. But I don't think our only option is to wring our hands over what young people are doing. 
Parents should take a beat and consider how they might give their children relevant information in a way that they can hear it. Maybe reiterate that they want them to have a pleasurable sex life. You have already said that, right? And also want them to be safe. Tell them that misinformation about certain practices, including choking, is rampant, that in reality it has grave health consequences. Plus, whether or not a partner initially requested it, if things go wrong, you're generally criminally on the hook. Um, I just want to say something about, like, the partner maybe re initially requested it or they consented or whatever. It's like, it doesn't really matter, in my opinion, if people do consent to certain things or request certain things. Like, some things are just wrong, regardless if you I want or request it. I totally agree. I think this is not something you can consent to. This is like, it's like I said, it's like attempted M word, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like you can't consent to that. I think there are actually things that you cannot consent to. Mm -hmm. Like we're, we've talked about, you know, um, like children or whatever. Yeah. Like children can't consent. Um, I think when money is exchanging hands, there's mm -hmm. no such thing as consent there i think when there's like massive 50 year age gaps or whatever or coercion of yeah. power and stuff like that there is no consent and i think you cannot consent to really i i mean i don't think you should to be able murdered. to yeah right like uh, i you know in canada you have like uh right what is it called? Like, you know, where assisted. Escort. Yeah. Medically assisted death. Yeah. Um, and so people would say, well, yeah, it's just like a bodily autonomy thing. Sure. I can, I can, you know, or I'm going to go get a tattoo or, oh, you have mm -hmm. tattoos, like a brand <laughs> or piercings or something. And that's all painful and it's altering your body and whatever, you know? Yeah. So it's like, I think there are things yeah, where it's like sort of you have to draw the line somewhere, though. And mm -hmm. this. This is like an extreme, like absolutely not acceptable at all. Right. There's no way it could ever be. I agree. And then I think, you know, as this article showing, it rarely ever is anyways. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's got to. This is a way women are sort of casually being assaulted and no one cares. And even the women don't see it as assault because it's so, so normalized amongst their generation or whatever. <sighs> yeah. Dr. Herbenick suggests reminding them that there are other lower risk ways to be exploratory or adventurous if that is what they're after, but it would be wisest to delay any rough sex until they're older and more skilled at communicating. You know what freaks me out about this is like, what the heck do teenagers need exploratory and adventurous sex for? Like, they're teenagers. Like, shouldn't the sex, just general, normal sex, be exciting and adventurous enough for a teenager? Yeah, I mean, I think they've, like, they've seen, by the time they do it, they've mm -hmm. seen it so much and they've seen such extreme versions I know, of it. It's so upsetting. Yeah, porn culture is really, really, really destroying everything. yeah yeah i think it really like someone said it's it's really a a health crisis mm -hmm. it's a, it's an epidemic i think for sure right joan of arc said uh i literally just thought rough sex just meant like vigorous right but no <laughs> it means like violent and potential death oh my god right the idea that the girls are afraid I mean, it just goes so counter to what it should be. Yeah. Yeah. That's scary. Um, she offers language when negotiating with a new partner, such as, by the way, I'm not comfortable with choking or other escalating behaviors, such as name calling, spitting, and genital slapping. So mm. please don't do it. Don't ask me to do it to you. They could also add what they are into and want to do together. Yeah, I I, uh, I I don't think it's realistic to expect teenagers to have those conversations, honestly. Oh my god. It's just it's again, we could talk about what's nice and what's I op ideal and optimistic, or we can talk about what's realistic. Mm-hmm. 
they're not going to have those conversations. And, and also, even if they do say it, right, you shouldn't have to negotiate safety, basic safety, your <sighs> own bodily, you know, yeah. not being harmed. But even, I mean, I just think it's actually, if you scroll up a little back to that paragraph, like, um, you know, that i have kind of actually grossed out by that suggestion because it, it totally ignores the reality that girls, if they did say stuff like that, the guy's mm-hmm. going to do it anyways. Right. They're just going to ignore that. That's what we were talking about yeah. before. It's like they really – there's no consequences for it, and they can easily do it because they're stronger. So why yeah. wouldn't they? Yeah, like at at worst, he's going to do it anyway, and at best, they're going to be like shamed or told they're a prude or berated or – they're going to make fun like, of them with no... their classmates. They're exactly. going to make uh, AI porn out of them or whatever. Like, God. Yeah. I'd like to point high school health teachers to evidence-based porn literacy curricula, but I realize that incorporating such lessons into their classrooms could cost them their jobs. Shafia Zaloum, a lecturer at the Harvard Graduate School of Education, recommends, if that's the case, grounding discussions in mainstream and social media. There are plenty of opportunities. You can use it to deconstruct gender norms, power dynamics and relationships, performative trends that don't represent most people's healthy behaviors, she said, especially depictions of people putting pressure on someone's neck or chest. Hmm. This is great. This kind of advice is always given to girls. Do you ever see this advice given to boys? Right. Mm. Again, and that's a theme that comes up a lot in our discussions Mm -hmm. too, is that like ultimately the burden, I am going to start saying the word burden instead of responsibility falls on Mm -hmm. the girl because she's going to be the one who's harmed. So, you know, and that's not victim blaming, but that's just to say like, that's the reality of it is she's the one who's going to be harmed. The burden of the harm falls on her. So she has to do whatever it is in her power to Mm -hmm. avoid it. But yeah, the, the boy just, he's not, Right. I mean, it's sort of on that same continuum of, oh, we teach, we teach girls to not get raped. We don't teach boys not to rape. I mean, you can't, that's the thing. You cannot do that. You can increase the consequences. Mm -hmm. You know, what if it was instead of one in 200 rapes that was um, led to a conviction and time served? What if it was one in, uh, well, you know, what if it was not one in, what if it was nine out of 99 and a hundred? Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. Ugh. there would be fewer that mm-hmm. that's what it is i mean i think our society is not interested in there being fewer rapes because we can easily do it by changing yeah. the laws exactly oh my god so that's so if, upsetting if we wanted if we wanted fewer rapes we could do it we don't want fewer rapes that's the reality mm-hmm. that's we're the world comfortable with the amount of rapes that happen because the the Victims of rape are not human beings Uh because you didn't know that. Yeah. They're just women. Right. They're just women. They're not people. Mm -hmm. I also know that pediatricians like other adults struggle when talking to adolescents about sex. The typical conversation, if it happens, lasts 40 seconds. Then again, they already caution younger children to use a helmet when they ride a bike because heads and necks are delicate. They can mention that teens might hear things about might hear about things people do in sexual situations, including choking, then explain the impact on brain health and why such behavior is best avoided. They should emphasize that if, for any reason, a fall, a sports mishap, or anything else, a young person develops symptoms of head trauma, they should come in immediately, no judgment for help in healing. I think that's fairly good advice, and I think I, I think everyone needs to know about this mm-hmm. potential for brain injury via this route. Mm-hmm. and and go from there. Yeah. The role and responsibility of the entertainment industry is a tangled knot. Media reflects behavior, but also drives it, either expanding possibilities or increasing risks. There is precedent for accountability. The European, U- European Union now requires age verification on the world's largest porn sites in ways that preserve user privacy, whatever that means on the internet. That discussion, unsurprisingly, has been politicized here. 
Social media platforms have already been pushed to ban content promoting eating disorders, self-harm, and suicide. They should likewise be pressured to ban content promoting choking. Traditional formats can stop glamorizing strangulation, making light of it, spreading false information, using it to signal female characters' complexity or sexual awakening. Young people's sexual scripts are shaped by what they watch, scroll by, and listen to, unprecedentedly so. They deserve and desperately need models of interactions that are respectful, communicative, mutual, and at the very least, safe. Right. Attempting to M word someone is not sexy. No. And it should never be entwined with that. No. Like, you know, they were mentioning those HBO shows or whatever. It's yeah. like, I haven't seen that, but I would guess that it's portrayed in a pretty like sexy way. Mm-hmm. I and seen you're talking either. about attempted murder of somebody or attempted like serious harm. Mm. Yeah. Did we want to invite some people on yes. to share their thoughts? Um, let me just close this. Uh, okay, so the link, whoops, we got some slides, some comments from this yeah. article. Um, if there's anyone who has the link who wants to join, you're welcome to. You know where to yes, find the it. The link is in on the island. Mm hmm okay so first comment that i took from the article was choking someone is not assault and battery sure sounds like it mm -hmm. well also you know going back to this idea of language being so important and powerful and the words we use and everything i think you really have to stop calling it choking right it's strangulation it has nothing to do with choking yeah strangulation i think is a much more powerful word yeah it really says what it is mm -hmm. hi joan. Ah, joan welcome welcome hello hello you guys keep talking i'm just gonna soundproof myself a bit more oh joan okay. with her wonderful british sleepy <laughs> bedtime voice <laughs> use the legal words great point yeah, definitely. Okay, next one. You can talk about the dangers of it and consent without the weird kink shaming that litters this article. This reeks of Puritan nonsense. <laughs> like, oh, how like can you read you... this article and that's your takeaway? Because your brain is rotted. Literally. This is what we mean by brain rot. Mm. Like, and also, like, literal brain rot, too, right? Like, I mean, if this person, yeah, knows, literally. maybe they, like, enjoy being on the receiving end of it, then, like, their brain has been negatively impacted by this. Mm -hmm. Hi, Irene is here as well. Hello. Hi. Hey. Do you have thoughts? Oh, well, I would say I wasn't here for a portion of the stream. It's actually my girlfriend's birthday soon. Oh. So I've been <laughs> preparing stuff for her for the next couple of days. Um, but I did see there were some women in the chat um, who were expressing a lot of stress was kind of my impression. A lot of um, feelings of despair is mm. kind of how I would describe it um mm. and I think that we have to find a way um to be able to approach this through a, a like a, a healthy lens right to be able mm -hmm. to figure out how do we transform our frustration or our, our negative emotions into a, um an outlet for good you know so I think that um my suggestion is I like I've been learning about stoicism. Like stoicism is not what people think it is. It's really a methodology for, um, you know, reducing your own suffering in dealing with everything that life throws at you and everything that tries to disrupt your tranquility. Um, and so I think that uh, I would suggest for the women who have been feeling these negative emotions um, to look for ways to manage them whether that's finding community or or 
finding ways to become, um, you know, stoic in certain ways. It's just my mm. thought, but. Yeah, very much so. Thank you. Um, Existential Gamer is here now, too. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, Green Emerald had a comment about this comment saying, I would love to know how this person would talk <laughs> about the dangers of kink without kink shaming, since any criticism is seen as shaming. Yeah, but they always say that. Of course. It, it doesn't matter what you say. You could you could be talking about people dead mm -hmm. and they'll still go in the comments and say, <laughs> it's kink shaming. Oh, and by the way, Irene, I can plus one for the stoicism. I do that too. Yes. Just sad. <laughs> And if people don't realize what it means because people think being stoic is just suppressing your emotions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, being like, unfeeling. Yeah. Right? right, and just like not feeling anything, but that's not what it is. It's like the purpose of having a philosophy, like the stoic thinkers would say this, is they would say that the purpose is to reduce your own suffering. Mm -hmm. And it isn't to say like, oh, just don't care because that's not what this is. It's like- Right, it's like- Sorry. No, you're good. Go ahead. I was going to say, it's like, like you have to batten down the hatches kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that what is happening isn't bad or couldn't be harmful, but you can prepare yourself to face it. Yes. And also like the fundamental aspects of stoicism are what is in my control? Like what yep. can I control? What can I own and go about life in that manner, knowing that. And so so it is important to observe and to see when things could be disturbing your own tranquility and to figure out how to manage that. Mm -hmm. Good points. Um, okay, let's go to our next comment I took. So MD here, strangulation is sexual abuse and the number one predictor of future lethal violence. If a man tries to strangle you, get out. Mm -hmm. Yes. Always uh, an option after the fact. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh. Uh, okay, next one I have. If it's so pleasurable, why aren't women choking men as well? Why aren't they mm -hmm. requesting it? What a sad article in State of Affairs. Generations learning sex from pornography. Wow. <laughs> right. <laughs> But yeah, that's just the thing. It's like, yeah, it's it sounds like it's pretty systemically happening to girls and young women only, like not men, right? Yeah, isn't that always the case though? Yeah. About how we're told that things are empowering and mm -hmm. that the sub has the power and that Ugh. being strangled Ugh. is, you know, so amazing. And everything women do, like from putting on makeup to sexualizing themselves to submitting to a man like it's supposed to be our ultimate calling and if it was so great men would definitely do it and they'd probably keep us out of it too yes yeah it's so subverted like yeah the <laughs> things that we're told are empowering are literally the worst things for us yeah they have nothing to do with power at all and in fact it has everything to do with giving him power and not you exactly Mm. I do find that interesting as well with when you hear about like men who have fetishes for being submissive it's still about like having a particular kind of power yeah. um, Roxy Roots on Twitter she said some stuff about how she would she worked as a dominatrix and she would end up degrading those men in ways that they genuinely did find degrading to them as men and at that point they never came back to her and I found that telling yeah uh, <sighs> somebody is hearing a chirping i do too but i'm not sure what it <laughs> might be <laughs> oh i'm sorry listen the the frogs and stuff are outside oh, are those window. frogs <laughs> yeah how I'm, cute is that i have a swamp land outside in the back of my condo and Aww. if you guys hear that it's just ambient noise i'm sorry Oh, no, that's okay. The little fellas Cute. are just going. <laughs> Springtime. Okay, next Yo. comment. Yeah. None of these encounters, or most of these encounters involve young women who acquiesce to such a practical a practice prompted by men, young or old. This is what sexual 
freedom has come to. What is the next step in this push for female liberation and empowerment, which has become simply fulfilling male fantasies or you're not liberated at all? Hey, mm. maybe get some religion or spirituality back into our lives. Maybe consider the sacredness of the body and act accordingly. Womp womp. What do we think of this? Um, I don't, it's funny. I don't, yeah, I don't like the religion part, but I right. do. I wouldn't say sacredness. I'd say like dignity is kind of mm. a word I keep coming back to. Um, and this thing of like, yeah, that like every person has this kind of intrinsic dignity and it, and it, you know, in sort of our cases, particularly men will try to ruin that and we sort of can't let them. And it's also hard, like that thing of realizing you've let yourself be degraded or whatever. And I think that, um, particularly, yeah, like a lot of women I've spoken to, it seems like, I don't know, I hope they come out of it, but that thing of like, they are really accepting this treatment. Um, yeah, and that's kind of a whole other part of this that I find interesting is, yeah, the culture around it, that I think that if something else had been done to me by some of these men, then I might have gotten a different reactions from my friends. Mm. But it took me like having to ring a rape crisis number to get any mm. kind of acknowledgement that what happened to me was wrong Ugh. um and i sort of like that's the bit that disturbs me like the people had more sympathy when like i got ghosted or something <laughs> than when i was like actually assaulted it's very um disturbing and yeah realizing that it was two-thirds of women it, uh, I don't know why, but that of all things, because I had heard it was a third a while back. I'd obviously misread that statistic um, about that being like the most recent encounter. And just, I don't know, something about that just, it made my blood run cold of just like. Yeah, it's so a huge number. Yeah. Joan, there was something that you mentioned in the chat before that I wanted to circle back to because mm. you said there was a difference between strangulation and putting a hand under someone's clothes before they were mm. ready yeah what I meant by that is that um that if if I was let's sort of yeah obviously there's criticisms to be had of engaging in a relationship with a man at all but putting that aside in like the utopia mm. if I was yeah starting a physical relationship with someone and we were kissing and a hand went under my shirt and I wasn't quite ready and we and we like backed away from that I wouldn't feel upset because the impulse to want to do that in the ideal world is nice it's you know to touch me more to to you know caress me in a nice way it's all the intention is positive even if I'm not like ready for that mm -hmm. whereas like one of these situations I wasn't um Oh, it's also weird and like mix up but like this thing of like I don't think I was physically harmed like I don't think all this brain damage stuff is something I do need to worry about mm -hmm. the psychosomatic issues I have with like not being able to relax my uh throat is is very real but like the impulse to do that doesn't come from somewhere nice mm -hmm. and that that for me was the bit that I yeah is terrifying and chilling like someone wanting to move too fast isn't isn't pleasant in the moment but if that's someone who things do move on with and you do trust and you you know they'll understand and that's part of it but yeah wanting to attempt to strangle someone can't come from a good place and if someone thinks it does then that is appalling <laughs> and I I don't know yeah, yeah. it's just like, like that the first Terrible. scenario, yeah, the first scenario you're talking about, like, where they want to move forward, but you're not ready, and then they back off. It's like your pleasure and your comfort is kind of front and center there, too. Like, they're doing it because they think it's going to be pleasurable for you also. Mm. Yeah. And then if you're like, well, I'm not comfortable with that, then, you know, there's communication, too. Like, I think that idea, too, that this is something that, takes away like it literally takes away a woman's voice to it's so dehumanizing in that way you know like yeah it takes away your it, ability to communicate yeah 
because I've been writing all these things about like the heroine's journey as opposed to the hero's journey and all this sort of stuff and also yeah that thing of survivors talking about losing their voice in a metaphorical sense but then also yeah like physical damage of the voice box and stuff and like I, I was about to say I was a singer I oh no <laughs> I like to think of myself still as a singer <laughs> but that is like quite painful that I feel like I can't do something that I really loved and that's yeah strange and the other part of that also being with this idea of like um I need to think and come back to it it's something about wanting to cause harm oh yeah. no that was it so there was this thing about girls should go and ask like oh I don't want you to do this I don't want you to do that but the only reason I would caution against that is because um so I did I did have like a hook up with a guy who it was nice it was fun and I then later found out um, that he was aroused by strangulation. Now, he hadn't done that to me, and he never did. But if I'd said to him at the outset, I don't, like, don't strangle me, I would never have known that that was something he had the capacity to be aroused by. Ugh. And yeah. it was important for me to know that and then go, I'm, I'm never speaking to you again, I'm never engaging with you again. Because yeah, and, that's reprehensible to me. <laughs> sometimes men will take what you say as, you know, if you tell them don't do it, they'll take the first opportunity to do it. Mm. Yeah, too. I definitely thought about that as we were reading yeah. it. Too, and even if, like, it, yeah, if you bring it, it up, like, then right. it will be in it, their mind. It might not be in that encounter, but they might use it later, which, um, yeah. But Joan... Do you think maybe it's the realization? Because I had an experience once too where I didn't get hurt, quote unquote, but you know, I felt like I escaped some really bad intentions. And it's like mm -hmm. when you when the realization hits you that they wanted to do something evil to you, and that if they really wanted to do it, they could have done it. And you know, it, you kind of lose a lot of innocence that way you're like oh my god <laughs> yeah and because of how well that can be concealed like yeah um like I had you know I've met men who I've you know I can just tell from the outset there's something off with them mm -hmm. so obviously I don't pursue anything but like one of these guys in particular I uh, like saying I was head over heels is a bit extreme but like I was really really taken in by him and I, I've got a bit of an unusual situation with this whole like accidentally basically being a female separatist until my late 20s mm. literally barely knowing any men which both left me with certain barriers that were very healthy for me but also a lot of naivety um and yeah this guy like and, and I think this is a complicated bit is that I don't think this guy was I don't think he saw anything wrong with it and I think that's the bit that I find the most chilling I've come across guys who have been concealing evil intentions but even they are aware that those intentions are evil mm. and I don't actually think this guy saw anything that he was doing as wrong or strange um and I spoke to him about it and that was such a weird thing of discussing that in person um but I thought like it had really gone in and it really upset me that there was this feeling of like oh the next woman he boos with he'll like treat appropriately and I feel really jealous that she's gonna like you know get the nice version of him um but I think and again it was something that, like made me go insane again after I thought I'd gone like sort of recovered quite well was um realizing that actually in all likelihood he probably hasn't and he'll probably do that to another woman who comes along maybe even if she is one of these women who goes please do that to me and and it's just the number that's the thing again the thing that is like it's an emergency like it's two-thirds of young women it's not like obviously one percent still shouldn't be happening it's the majority but it's, it's two-thirds it's the majority and i'm just like and the fact that that so many of us don't even see that as assault or wrong or and there's no way to talk about it because it's turned into kink shaming and it's just like Oh, it's like reading all that stuff about the logical, uh, this this is a bit of a tangent, but it's kind of, I don't know, I think about it a lot, this thing of like, you know, women uh, being convinced to like, like the standard for what's an appropriate amount of coverage is less and less, and then we shave off our body hair, and now we're at the point where women are getting labiaplasties, and then the in porn, mm -hmm. there, are, there are videos of 
women having prolapses that are intended to be arousing where does it end and I feel like this about this like strangulation is now normalized to this extent where does this end and when and how do we put our do we collectively put our feet down and say stop and I just don't know at this point the conversations I try to have with friends about it I think I mean, I, I don't I don't even think it is an exaggeration to say that it it was as horrifying and appalling for me and made me go as insane as the actual incidents did. Like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Thanks for sharing, Joan. We're all here for you. Yeah. Thanks for listening as well, because this is like, I don't know. Yeah, I stayed up. <laughs> I stayed up late because I wanted to talk about it because it was something I find. Yeah, but I, no one gets. Yeah, yeah well, I'm gonna sneak back to bed and be quiet as I listen to the rest of it. But thank you so much for having me. Of course, always. Thanks. Sleep well, John. Um, I've got two more comments to look at. This one says, "Many men make a game of violating a woman's boundaries and convincing her to compromise them." It's the relentless testing and renegotiating and gaslighting intended to wear women down, make them unsure of themselves, and get them to acquiesce. He chokes you out of the blue. You question what happened. Is this normal? Should I go along with it? Are you being a prude? Are you being too picky? It's an extension of negging, the pickup artist technique of subtly insulting a woman to lower her self-confidence and therefore her sense of worth. Yeah, this really makes me think of, like, just how much thought women have to put into all of this stuff. Like, that's a, a burden that we bear in relationships, just really thinking, overthinking every detail. And if you did, you know, if you did everything right or whatever, mm -hmm. it's all on you to, like, that's a responsibility that women are a burden, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, men don't have that mental – they just do it and they don't think about it, you know? Correct. Yeah, and they don't even think about asking for what they want to. You know, that's, like, the lower level of this all is that a lot of women are like, oh, if I say something during, you know, during uh, during sex, like, oh, but is it going to turn them off? Like, am I going to be too demanding? What mm -hmm. if it – what if it does this or that? And yeah. it's like – and this doesn't even touch the realm of like supposed kinks where he's strangling her or something terrible. It could be something as simple as, hey, I'd like to have a good time at some point. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Grief. Yeah. And you see all the time that men will be like, just tell us, just tell us what you want. <laughs> it doesn't matter. No. And, you know, a lot of straight women will come in and say, listen, we, we tell and they either get really uh, petulant about it or they're like, OK, and then they just do what they want anyway. Like they just don't do it. <laughs> uh. OK, last one. Well. We're about to elect a president who grabs and assaults women without their consent and a political party that's okay with uh, imp okay with impregnating women and little girls and forcing them to stay pregnant. So it seems like we have an extremely uphill battle as society doing right by women and girls. Yep. Oof. Yeah, it's definitely on the same continuum mm. of just like losing respect, losing like the basic humanity, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was some chat uh, earlier about when all this started. And I think it was Morgan who was like, I saw this 20 years ago. And I'm, I feel the same way. Like this whole thing is like a natural accumulation of the whole like early 2000s sex positive thing. And mm -hmm. just inch by inch by inch where we were sort of indoctrinated into this kind of thing with like the rise of online porn and then like the, the porn culture that's like, oh, it's totally natural and normal and perfectly healthy to uh, consume porn. And, you know, Ugh. you have to be sex positive. If you criticize anyone's 
anyone's orgasm. Like if you yuck anyone's yum, yeah. you're a bigot. And it, it's just, it's, I've, I've seen the trajectory personally, just because I've lived that long, but yeah, it's alarming that this is happening, but it's not really that surprising, I guess. Also that, you know, like amongst progressives, there's this idea of sex work is work and that we oh, should yeah. never shame like the women who do sex work. Not that we do, that it's framed as shaming them or whatever, but criticizing yeah, just, is not the same as criticizing like an individual woman's well, it, choices yeah, but, or whatever, but. Like we saw in this article, these dumb kinksters will come in. No matter what you say in the article, <laughs> they'll, they'll yeah. be like, "Oh, you're kink shaming." And then the same is the same for sex work or prostitution. It's yeah, the same well, thing. part of sex work is creating pornography too. So it's yeah. like, oh, if you push that idea that that's totally normal, like mm -hmm. even OnlyFans, OnlyFans is not seen as extreme anymore. That's seen as no. pretty mild yeah people That's, make jokes about it mainstream like literally mainstream extremely yeah, gals people are doing that they make jokes about having a side hustle you know oh just god like, right. that. Yeah. yeah regular just regular everyday women you know oh yeah. you can have a side hustle on, on of yeah i see i've seen so many reddit posts where it's like people asking or so, well, Lisa, like you said, we got to start saying women, women right. asking um, for tips on like how to make some quick extra cash because whatever, they didn't expect this car thing that blew up and they have to pay for it, whatever. And all of the posts will be like, and don't suggest only fans because like, mm -hmm. that's always the answer is yeah. these people just say only fans. I also think it's gross. I see a lot of like Redditor bros who will say stuff like, I wish I was a woman so I could do that. And like, if only uh, I was a woman. I'm like, wow, you really have no idea, do you? Right. Like some of them even see that as a form of privilege, right? Like, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, if a woman needs money, she can just get naked. I don't have that privilege. <laughs> some of them feel like it's oppression that they can't have the easy way oh come on for real though yeah that's a real thing yeah they're like oh you live life on easy mode you can just go on only fans and instantly 50 old men are going to be buying you maseratis <laughs> lisa was it you that posted the other day that the average woman makes 150 dollars yeah it's, it's like yeah, stupid it's peanuts yeah, that's like average so too. That's there are women who are making a million dollars on there, or whatever. So when you when you av that's how average works. That's not like the median. I don't right. know what the median is, but it's got to be really low. Dismal. Like, and then half the women are making less than that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. it's not like all women are making one hundred fifty dollars. There's women who are putting naked pictures and videos of themselves online and making three dollars a month or whatever. Whoop de doo. That was worth it. Yeah, my dignity is worth three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're and we're not laughing at the women. No, of no, no, no. We're laughing at it's... the absurdity of you know this is the natural conclusion when you're not seen as a human being. Yeah, and I, I feel bad for those women because they were probably told a whole pack of lies about it, just like we all hear. Oh, just go on OnlyFans. You'll make yeah. that you'll make that car transmission money in no time. Mm -hmm. Nope. <laughs> no, you won't. Uh, goodness gracious. Yeah. Um, I love this comment from Ice Goddess. What's stopping the men from doing it? Yeah. That's the thing is Shannon here just said, uh, olden days, I always said to use your feminine wiles. It's like, yeah, the, the buying and selling of everything that is a woman has been since the dawn of time, it seems. It's awful. They teach like um, primates to use money to buy bananas or whatever. Mm. And then the next thing, once they learn how to use money, to exchange like coins oh, no. or whatever for bananas the next thing they do is they buy sex with it what yeah oh. that's a real thing yeah that's a real thing wow. oh my god yeah, you... they will use the coins to buy that's sex that's interesting yeah 
Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. I literally just. <laughs> Did you just Google that? Yes. That was like oh chimpanzees God. or bonobos or whatever, but like, yeah. Yeah. 2011. I mean, it's wild. Also, I just taught monkeys the concept of money. Not long after, the first prostitute monkey appeared. Oh, no. Oh, that's mm. so... But it's just socialization, guys. Right. <laughs> or is oh. it? Or is Even it? if that's, quote-unquote, the natural order of things, like, we, we, have, we don't have monkey brains. We have right. big, beautiful human brains. Agreed. And Mm -hmm. We don't we don't give in right. to every instinct we have. We don't jump right. over the counter at the bakery and grab a fistful of cake. We you know we don't poop in the streets. <laughs> right. <Yeah>. Well, <laughs> well the world does actually. But well, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um yeah, you know, like it may be the natural order of things, but we should believe that we can Yeah, well that's the thing, that. is how, so often how like we say like um just because something might be like quote unquote natural or normal or normalized doesn't mean it's good or okay. Right. Oh, absolutely. Or instinctual, you know, just because you have an right. instinct to do something. Just because men instinctually want to, do to do rape it. doesn't mean that they should. Like, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't like treating it like the weather, you know. Oh, mm. can't, can't do anything about it. It's, uh, yeah. it's just a lot of rape out today. I don't know. You know? <laughs> oh, what can man. we do? I mean, that's how people treat it, though. The ones that believe in, you know, the innate theory, which, yeah, kind of do. I do. Uh, simply because of its prevalence across all cultures, times, religions. It's always existed. And uh, what else could it be? You know, but like Lisa said, it doesn't mean we have to just accept it like it's a hurricane coming in. Right. Right. Correct. Right. Correct. And I was saying like earlier in the stream, too, like um the you know we don't prosecute these crimes yeah like which just says that we're comfortable with that level of assault happening against women because we could change it and societies that do have stricter crimes they do have less rape mm -hmm. i mean they have, yeah. you know stricter laws yeah so yeah i mean like laws and punishment like ideally right it should be a like a deterrent like it should make a person consider if they are going to go through with committing this crime or not because of what the outcome for themselves could be but certainly in like the united states and canada like that is not that is not how it works like the um the quote-unquote punishments are so low yeah even worse and was here. it <clears throat> Wasn't marital rape only outlawed like a few decades ago? Like eighties, like eighty three yeah. or something. Yeah, I think it was early nineties in America. Wow, uh, sometime in the nineties when the last state finally. Oh my god, had it. I'd have to look that up though. But what, like, that says a lot about how, like, the heterosexual marriage is. It's seen as like this untouchable thing like oh the husband and the wife it's this perfect union um yeah. you know there's nothing about it that could go wrong you know it's that's part of that narrative yeah i had a i have catholic cousins and one of them kind of believed this whole thing of well if you're married it it can't possibly be assault because <laughs> you know that's what happens in a marriage yeah because your body belongs to your spouse. And even though she tried to be like, but you know, his body belongs to me too. Yeah. That's I'm not like, true. Yeah. In, in the woman practice, is the property. Right. And in practice, are you really going to be able to make him do anything that he's no. going to make you No, it's, that's just lip service. It doesn't mean anything. No. Uh, women yeah. can't really rape men. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't, I, I, I agree I, too. It's a spicy take. Yeah. Spicy. Is this the spicy well, take portion of the stream? Go for it. Drop them. Yeah, my spicy I mean, take is that. Uh, oh, yeah. No, go, no ahead. go ahead. Finish yours. Well, I was just going to, you know, I mean, it's uh, it's physics. Right? Yeah. I mean, the, the thing doesn't get, you know, I don't have to say yeah. it. We all know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know People in the UK for sure that literally is the case when you come to the definition of the law. 
that yeah. women cannot commit rape on a man in the UK law because well, of yeah the physics. But sometimes uh, you were going to say something existential. Oh no, I, I was going to expound on Lisa's point that even though sometimes that can happen involuntarily, right? Wink, wink, mm. uh, the man can still just push her off unless he's like completely drugged. In which case, I guess that would be uh, she would have assaulted him, but. Yes, I, I agree women with don't that. really do that. They don't really like, right. They don't do that. Like it's so. No. Yes, if it's more, it may have happened at some point. In which case, sure. sure, that man is a victim, and he deserves the sympathy that all victims deserve. But that's yeah. so. It's almost theoretical because right. if you drug right. someone to that point, then that involuntary yeah. thing is very unlikely true. to happen. Very true. Yes. So. Hmm. I yeah. guess I give him some like Viagra or something. I don't yeah, know. With, <laughs> just something. In, with it. <laughs> yeah. Now we're getting, we're getting real into theory. But like theory. women aren't, th that's the other thing is, um, oh, extra spicy take is Ooh. women don't need to rape men. Right. Because right. women can easily get sex whenever they want it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and may maybe not of any quality, but sure, yeah, <laughs> for sure, yeah. That's just kind of bizarre because men men will yeah, say I, like, "Oh, you can get it whenever you want," but then they'll be like, "Oh, rape statistics are literally gender equal, and both men and women do it at the same rate." It's just no, they men, don't. Men no. are shamed. Men, you know, poor men. The women are just. I'm like, how can you believe both things? How can you believe that women can just go out into the street and be like anyone want to have sex and and 50 guys will come running out i see like mm -hmm. i see so many people saying stuff like male victims aren't taken seriously like female victims are and i'm like female <sighs> victims are not taken seriously like i don't no. know like, what like seriously where saying, but like that is not happening i mean look at all the look at all the sympathy brendan fraser got mm. on reddit and if a woman, you know, when a woman's story is is out there, it's all, well, you know, she's just what making it up. Just what did she do? She wants to advance her career. Right, her right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's it's dumb. I feel My very Zoomer because I don't think I know who that is. So <gasps> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. He's an actor. He's an actor who was in the late 90s, early 2000s, was like, yeah, the heartthrob. He was like on the up and up. He was the star of the Mummy, like really big action movies. Oh. Um, and he came forward about being assaulted by a male Hollywood producer, mm -hmm. and he was dragged for it and shamed yeah. and humiliated and made fun of. And he pretty much retreated in his career for it. Mm. Um, and then recently had a resurgence because he had a really great w role and won an academy award but mm -hmm. um i mean that's yeah, the thing that's... too when when me men are victims or boys are victims they're victims of men right yeah. yes exactly well, right it's yeah. that the, the gender dynamic never really flows the other way it's all coming from the same source so if anything they should look to women victims also as allies and not like oh we need to share the resources or something it's like no we need to all direct our energy to the same place which is these men who are victimizing both men and women mm -hmm. yeah yeah it frustrates me like so often when men will say stuff like men are victims too or men get assaulted too and it's like by whom right mm -hmm. right exactly it's not us Nope. Like, right. yes, they do get assaulted too. By who? It is a male problem. I, 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 I see also, a lot of women say it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it, it's just like, it's one of those things like it doesn't, if you're, ha it's like a deflection of the conversation that you're having too. Like, if you're having a conversation about women victims, just be having a conversation of women about women victims. Like, we can, ha there's space for those conversations independent mm -hmm. of acknowledging even that men well, are also victims. But that's why they do it. They know that. They right. do that on purpose. Of yeah, course. absolutely. It's it's, cl it's classic. Um, kind of like in race discussions, people will be like, talking about it is just as bad as being racist. 
Like you see those <laughs> wild takes. Oh, you're just as bad. You're talking about it. I've literally seen that. I'm like, oh wow, this person is really stupid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because so, I think there is a lot of power in women having spaces for our own discussions and like yeah that's why men are always trying to get in right definitely they don't want women to just congregate as women and keeping men out Mm -hmm. you know and that they the the whole trans thing is the same thing i mean i've seen red pill dudes online talking about well you know just claim that you're trans and infiltrate and it's like, what? You guys are just psychos. What are you talking about? Yeah. Because they can't yeah. they can't just let a woman's space be. They have to be in it to monitor and to see lion and to inject their opinions and to shout women down. Yep. Yep. There's also a narrative that I've seen where um, men will say things like, oh, well, she she wouldn't consider it harassment or assault if it was done by, like, a handsome a guy. A hot guy. Like a oh, my God. A attractive Chad. <laughs> that kind oh. of thing. Um, which is also incorrect. Yeah, that's wrong because I had a friend who was stalked by mm. what everybody considered to be a very attractive, handsome guy. In fact, she was into him in the beginning mm-hmm. and then he left dead birds on her porch oh my god uh, i was gonna and, say relatable up to that point but yeah he, well he would also stop like he'd pop up in her windows and by the time the police <laughs> arrived he would he would always be gone like it was terrifying for her that's awful yeah and this guy shouldn't according to you know reddit bros shouldn't have had to do that because he i guess could have gotten any woman he wanted he was conventionally a handsome dude but like that doesn't matter i was gonna say like the situations that i've experienced where it was like turned dark or whatever it was like yeah i was initially like really into the person yeah and are really attracted to them Mm -hmm. like the only mm -hmm. thing it does is it just it it gets your guard down a little bit at the beginning but it doesn't mean that the guy can't be a psycho or a creep i I mean that's most relationships that turn abusive or whatever it's like the if you know, the guy has attractive qualities from the beginning and then yeah, that's, and then you're yeah, kind of in then, it and you've invested something in it too. So you have this cognitive dissonance of like, wait, actually, I do like this person. So maybe I will put up with this mm, to an extent, yeah. you know? Yeah. Sunk cost fallacy. Yes. yes. Mm. You're all into your logical fallacies. Yes. Did yeah. you look that one up? <laughs> I did. <laughs> Did I get it right? <laughs> uh, I don't know, actually. I think there might. Well, I think it's more like a slippery slope. The other one we were talking about, but yeah, yeah, that too. Yeah. Anyways, I don't even remember what it was now, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Radical. Uh, <laughs> did you want to? Did radical? I want to? Yeah. Uh, ask if uh, uh, anyone else wants to join us before. Yeah. Yeah, I think we've got about another 10 minutes or so. If anyone else wants to hop on, you're welcome to. Um, Yeah. Did you want to put it in the chat? Yeah, I will. Uh, Let's see here. Invite, copy. You can still use your discretion. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a link to join if you want to say anything. We're happy to have you. uh, while we wait for anyone else to potentially hop on, um, Lisa, you'll stream on Friday, I'm sure. Yes, I will stream on Friday. Let me take a gander. I think there was, I might do a poll. I feel like the polls really kind of engage people because they mm-hmm. are interested in. Um, but let's see, I did have a topic. I don't remember what it was. So this is the last topic I saved, actually. So yeah. there was something about the manosphere. There was an article about the oh, manosphere God. being toxic. But it was very man-centric article. So of I don't course. Know. Toxic masculinity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're just yeah, shaming like... men. <laughs> right. 
Shannon yeah. says give notice so that she can get it. Yeah, if everyone here um, would like to subscribe to Lisa's channel, you should because she always posts in her community when she's going to stream and mm -hmm. always does great Friday content. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's always Friday at 1 mm -hmm. p.m. Eastern. Friday daytime. Um, okay, well, I don't know if anyone else is joining us. So I guess I will say thank you to the women who hopped on, Irene and Existential and Joan. Um, it's always nice hearing everyone else's thoughts and contributions. And I appreciate uh, the people who, who come and share with us. We appreciate you. Yes, we appreciate. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Um, <laughs> Okay, well, uh, thank you, gals. Thanks, everyone. Um, see you next week for sure. And have a great evening. You too. And thank you to all the newcomers in the chat. I did see a few new names like Willow and JKS and Morgan. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's so nice to see this little community grow and chomp. That's another new one. <laughs> um, thanks to all the women who are here. You're all wonderful. And we we would be nothing without the, the surrounding of the community. So thanks. Yeah, definitely. All right. Have a lovely evening. Um, Irene and Existential, feel free to stay on. And we'll just have a little wrap up. And have a Debrief. great night. Bye. 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 Bye.